Hello everybody and thank you so much for joining us for TTG's webinar with Travel Alberta. I am Maddie Barber, the Special Projects Editor at TTG Media. I'm joined today by Lynn Naylor, who is the Business Development Director for the UK at Travel Alberta. So thanks so much for joining me today, Lynn. Thanks for having me, Maddie. Absolutely. So during this webinar, we're going to be covering all things Alberta, including essential information, such as how to get there, who the destination will appeal to, and the customer budget required to visit. We're going to be covering destination highlights spanning city breaks in Calgary and Edmonton, winter adventures in Banff, Jasper and Kananaskis, and the best ways to make the most of the great outdoors as well as Indigenous tourism experiences. Towards the end of this webinar we will also cover marketing advice, selling tips and any other agent support that Travel Alberta is offering you right now. But before we get started with the questions, let's play a short video so that you can see the sights and sounds of Alberta. So a few questions to set the scene for agents in our webinar today. Which Alberta cities can visitors fly into from the UK and Ireland um, and which carriers are offering the routes at the moment? Um, so most people fly into Calgary from the UK and um, there's direct flights from London with WestJet and with Air Canada. Um, at the moment we're on our winter schedule and obviously Covid's hit that quite hard but coming back into the summer it'll be daily um, flights. And then obviously there's all the indirect routes as well. So people can go via Amsterdam with KLM and fly into Edmonton, which is a great way to access the north of the province. And then you can also go via Toronto and Vancouver if you're doing those indirect flights or taking some stops. So there's plenty of capacity to come in um, and it's a really short eight and a half hour flight. So it goes quite quickly and it just the excitement builds as you get closer. Yeah, great. Lots of options. So what type of clients should, should agents be recommending Alberta to in terms of demographics and markets? So families, couples, luxury travellers, groups, who's going to enjoy Alberta the most? That's really the beauty of Alberta. I mean, traditionally, it's been the, um, the sort of baby, the people who've had their baby boomers left. So it's sort of 50s plus who've done the coach touring in, in the past. But that's really changed in the last 10 years. And people are wanting to explore more and get really under the skin of the province. Um, so I would say anyone would enjoy it. So whether you've got the families who want to go and take that trip and take an RV and go and visit the dinosaur plains in the east, because any kid, any kid just loves it. Um, and then, or if you've got a ski holiday and you're taking your teenagers, well, then recently I was over there in October and you had a lot of honeymooners who had said that they were going to leave it, but decided to come because obviously Canada was open and they were just absolutely enthralled by the scenery, but loving the hiking and getting out. So they were having a great time as well. So there really is something for everyone. So those multi-generational holidays that are really popular at the moment, it's an ideal destination to sell it to because there is something for everyone. Okay, brilliant. 
And what about budget? I mean, you know, because clients are going to come in <coughs> about um, how much a trip to Alberta will cost. So are you able, able to give us any insight into what kind of budget a client would be looking at for a trip to Alberta? <laughs> Please excuse me. Um, yes, I'd say budgeting, I mean, it is how long is a piece of string, um, but around £3,000 would be a good starting point um, per person. I think that would give you a, a really nice holiday. Obviously, whether you want to do an RV trip and self-cater, that can bring costs down um, and make it cheaper, which is quite interesting if you're a family, that might be what you decide to do. Or if you really want to blow the budget and go five star lux and do heli skiing or do Rocky Mountaineer, then you can probably spend £5,000 per person. Also, depending on the sort of holidays and the hotels you want to stay in, it can really make a difference in your budget. But I think a good starting place would be about the three to £5,000 per person. But it's one of those holidays that might not be the cheapest in everyone's budget, but it's going to really move you and you're going to come back a changed person from having been there in the mountains and around the province and just experiencing it. Okay, great. So moving on to some destination highlights that agents can talk to their customers about. Now, I know that Canada is known for its absolutely jaw dropping scenery. Uh, can you talk us through the different landscapes that visitors will find in Alberta in particular um, and why it's such an important selling point for the province? I think it's just because it's so varied. Um, you can go from jaw-dropping mountains that everyone sees in all of those pictures in the Rockies and then go through the rolling foothills to the prairie lands and then if you go to the east you've got the Badlands which is the famous sort of like almost um, far out west feature um, landscape with the hoodoos, you've got the dinosaur graveyards, you, it's all surrounded by farmlands because that's where a lot of the farming and agricultural centre of that Canada is. So there really is something for, every, for everyone. You've got six UNESCO World Heritage Sites there, which are all in amazing scenery, scenic places. So whether you're down on the US border in Waterton or whether you're up in the north in Grand Prairie, where you've got miles upon miles of vistas. I mean, that's the one thing about Canada. I, people always laugh when I say big blue sky or big scenic sky, but the sky does seem to go on for miles and it's just beautiful. So there really is, whatever your scenery is, whether it's the forests or the lakes, or being actually in an urban centre and going along the river valleys in Calgary and Edmonton, there is something for everyone. Okay. And what about the different seasons in Alberta? How do the holiday experiences vary? Um, and, and what would you say is the best time to visit? So any type of year, really. I mean, winter is stunningly beautiful because you've got that great big blue sky with the white snow covered mountains as a backdrop. So it really does gleam. You've got powder snow. Um, it does get cold, but really not as cold as people think it is. And you can wrap up warm and there's all the gear you need is out there um, and you've also got that cozy winter wonderland so you can go and be out ice skating on a frozen lake and then go back you can have a hot chocolate in front of a fire and curl up um, so winter stunning the busiest time obviously is summer and you've got those turquoise lakes and you've got all the greenery around of the trees and the forests and the farmlands and then you've got spring and autumn which Again, both beautiful. Spring, you've got everything coming to life and um, you get those longer days and the hope of what's coming and you can see the transformation as it sheds its winter coat and you're getting to see the sort of lakes as they're at their freshest and the waterfalls when they're at their fullest. And then you've got autumn where you've got larch season. So you've got these bright yellow trees um, against the backdrop. So there really is something for everyone. And, Spring and autumn is when you get the best chance to see as much wildlife as you can because they're all coming out of either hibernation or they're stocking up before winter. So it's just, yeah, there's something for everyone. If I had to choose a favourite, I would probably say winter. Um, but that's just because I just love that great big blue sky framed by the snow mountains. But there really is something for everyone. Lovely. Thank you. OK, and now Alberta has two major cities, Calgary and Edmonton. Uh, what are the must-do activities or must-see sites that agents can include in an itinerary um, first in Calgary? So they're actually very sim similar in some 
elements from the consumer point of view, both Calgary and Edmonton are based on river valleys. So you've got an awful lot of activities alongside the river. So you'll see people cycling, rollerblading, um, running, and just using those river valleys to their full advantage. Canadians love being outdoors. Um, we were voted TripAdvisor's top three, I think, outdoor destination in the world um, a couple of weeks ago. So they do love being outdoors and that happens in the city as well. You can surf on the river in, Ca in Calgary. Um, you can go on boats. So there's plenty to do with the river valleys. And um, I'd say another thing is there's been a lot of buildings. So architecture is actually quite stunning. So in Calgary, you've got the Studio Bell Music Centre, you've got the library. There's lots of really good buildings going up that are stunningly um, built and just really worth a view. Um, I think with any city, and in, sorry, in Edmonton, you've got the new ice hockey stadium and the whole area around that, the ice district, which is going to be a really good entertainment space. But one of the things I'd say about any city is it's about getting under the skin. So why not book a food tour? or a walking tour, or go and just go around and get a, a view of what the city's like, because it's very easy to wander through a city and not actually experience it. Whereas going with these local people, they will take you and really show you some heart in the city. And there's, they're both cities with a lot of heart. So yeah, I'd definitely, I'd definitely say a food tour would be a great way of getting around either city. I mean, I, I love a food tour personally, so you can... <laughs> <laughs> well, they've also got like the, the um, you know, the bicycles where you all eat around a table and you can go and do a tequila oh, yeah. tour in Edmonton and stuff like that. So there's, there's loads of fab things, but I just think go with some of the locals and find out where they go, because that's one of the best ways of getting to find what's going on in the city. Yeah, there's a lot of fun in sniffing, at, sniffing out those local tips as well, isn't there? Definitely. Okay, so Canada is also famous for its Indigenous tourism experiences. So I just wanted to ask about uh, the options in Alberta. And, and are there any experiences that um, you know, cover Indigenous tourism that you would recommend to agents? Absolutely. So from Head Smashed in Buffalo Jump, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, where you can really just stand and imagine that you were there when they were having their buffalo herds come round. Um, we've got Warrior Woman up in Jasper where she'll stand and beat her drum and tell you stories. And you've got the Dark Sky um, experience in Jasper where you can see the stars and they'll explain the stories that Indigenous people told of old. Um, you've got um, Brenda Holder in Calgary, an amazing woman who'll take you on a medicine walk and show you how to make a lip balm that is fantastic. Or you can do survival training. Um, there really is a lot, but one of our, um, our most exciting new product is actually Métis Crossing, which is just north of Edmonton. So for anyone going Jasper and Edmonton route, it's about an hour and a half northeast of Edmonton. It's just opened a boutique lodge. So you can go and there's herds of white bison, um, but you can stay there and learn some of the skills that they used. Um, they're also going to have some pods there next winter for the Northern Lights because it's a very um, unpolluted area. But actually go and take part and listen to their stories. I think that's the, that's the best benefit is actually hearing how their way of life was. But there's lots of opportunities to do Indigenous tourism in Alberta. And I really do think it adds to our experience and part of our life story. Yeah, it sounds incredible. And in terms of other types of activities and experiences that visitors can have, I know adventure activities are a huge draw um, for Alberta. Can you talk us through some of the adventure activities or experiences that clients can look forward to, in particular Banff, Jasper and Kananaskis? Yeah, so this is a really interesting one because I think sometimes people think they have to be hardcore adventurers to come into Alberta because you see those pictures of that rock climber who's 200 foot off the ground and you're like, oh my goodness. And you can do that. I mean, if you want to do that, it's absolutely there for you. And if you want to do that, but under a little bit safer, um, you can do the Via Ferrata in Banff. And again, you can be up there tied on with a rope, but climbing and everything. Um, but adventure can be adventure with a small A as well. And it can be anything from, you know, ice skating on a lake, taking a bike tour through the, through, um, from Banff along the Million Lakes, going canoeing or even a raft, which is very easy. You just sit there and do a gentle raft down in Jasper. Um, there's something that 
it can be at your level and Albertas are really really friendly people I mean they've got the biggest hearts and they're happy to show you and make you enjoy your experience so in Canmore which is the sort of gateway to Kanaskis you've got the caving so you can actually go and go through a really large um, network of underground caves <coughs> but then on the back side you've got some easy walks like grassy lakes but then you go into the real wild wilderness where you camp um, and stay out in Kanaskis Park so I really do think it depends on your level whether you want to do the Nordic Spa or the hot springs in Banff or you want to um, get really physical and in winter you could go ice climbing there is really so much to do but it's like don't be too scared about adventure it really is at your level and the Albertans are the friendliest people and want you to get the best out of your holiday Lovely, yeah, plenty to choose from by the sounds of it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Okay, so now we've discussed some destination highlights and heard all these exciting activities. Let's play a quick video that's going to show you what they look like. Okay, fantastic. So now let's talk about the agent support that Travel Alberta is offering offering agents right now. Do you have any marketing advice for agents that are selling or looking to sell Alberta at the moment? Um, I think at the moment we've got a lot of people who've got that pent up demand to travel. They want to travel and they want to make it a great holiday. So my, my sort of tip for agents would be try and get them to add some activities in um, at point of booking because you know what it's like when you get to a destination and a bit like we were saying about cities not getting under the skin if you get to a destination and you don't know what you're doing you might not do it so I would definitely recommend for agents trying to get your clients booked into some activities before they leave it's good for you it's good for them it gives them some um, some sort of structure around their trip and it also is good for you in the sense that you're getting your commission on those bookings. Okay, great. And do you have any marketing assets that you share with agents or that they have access to, to help them market the destination? Absolutely. So um, we've got the Alberta Multimedia Library. Um, we've got our YouTube channel where you can very easily um, embed that in your website um, for your agency if that's what you want to do. Um, we've got Instagram and Facebook that you can use for imagery, etc. as well. Um, there really is a plethora there. There's, we're part of the Canada Specialist Programme as well. So that's another um, resource if you're wanting to learn more about the destination. Um, and then <coughs> I'm also here in the UK, so ready to answer any questions. And if you've got a query, anything that will help you secure that booking, please feel free to fire an email and I can try and give you some advice. Okay, brilliant. Good to know that you're on hand to help when, when needed. <laughs> yeah. And in terms of um, booking incentives, competitions, um, any extra training opportunities or fam trips, have you got anything else that's supporting that support for agents? So we, we've just done um, a ski offer where we offered seven nights skiing in Banff. Um, you had to book it through Canadian Affair, but it was open to anyone in the travel industry. And it was seven nights trip to Banff with ski lift pass, air ticket, hotel and breakfast for um, a thousand pounds, which was a really good deal. Um, we're planning on continuing that to try and get agents who maybe don't get a place on a fam trip because obviously we can't take everybody. There is only limited places. Yeah, sadly. Um, <laughs> but we're planning on doing that to try and get them to get out there. Um, we do offer fam trips through the through the year. Um, Obviously, the last 18 months, there's been a complete block on it, but they will be coming back strongly. Um, so you can expect to see them being put in the trade press as available. Um, we try and support as many as possible. So if Destination Canada are doing an agent trip, we'll try and help make sure that we're there to help them. But also, if, if agents are doing their own trip, then it's worth getting in contact with us because 
we can give them a VIP booklet, which includes discounts um, for when they're in resort. So whether it's the Banff Pass or we can make sure that they get some offers available. It's always worth getting in contact if you're doing your own trip um, and seeing if there's anything available at the time and we can see what we can do. Fantastic. OK, so just before we wrap up, is there anything else that you think our viewers today should know about selling Alberta at the moment? I think I'd just um, I'd reiterate that it's just such a beautiful place to go. Your clients are going to come back having had an amazing time. But if you can book those activities before they go, that's going to obviously make you seem like you know what they should do. A heli trip over the Rockies is something that is quite amazing or going for a horse ride in the Rockies whether you're a beginner or you want to actually ride out to a lodge and stay in the um, in the in the mountains then come back the next day just make those extra activity bookings because that will make their trip from special to amazing and they'll thank you for it and come back to you brilliant thank you so much Lynn for sharing all your insight today thanks Maddie for having us Thank you. And, and thank you to everyone who's tuned in to watch. I hope you've learned something new about Alberta today. And don't forget to check out the Destination Canada Hub and the Alberta page on teachingmedia.com for more educational content. And take care, everybody. Thank you.